Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is RIT 120 Hydraulics. Today we're going to have a discussion about flow control valves, which we've used in a bunch of labs right now, but we're going to actually discuss them in greater detail. And this is the general concept right here. Flow is directly proportional to speed, pressure, directly proportional to strength. If you can get this concept right here, and if you show up to all the labs, I guarantee you, you'll get an F plus, or maybe you even get a D in this course. Okay, so just remember what's inside that box. Show up to all the labs, you'll probably get a D. And what does D stand for? Degree. Okay, basically, this is one of the most important concepts you can understand for a hydraulic system. If we increase the flow into an actuator, we'll increase its speed. If we increase the pressure available to it, basically we're going to increase the strength available to it. Okay, it can lift a greater object. Okay, so what we're talking about right now is flow and speed. Okay. Um, Let's talk about the flow control valve as it exists right here. This is a fixed flow control valve. Okay, they're often called needle valves. Okay, uh, excuse me, it's not a fixed. It's a variable flow control valve, but it's not pressure compensated. Um, we'll go into all this here. It's called a needle valve because there's a needle in it. Okay, makes sense. Okay, what happens here is basically the fluid coming in this end, it's forced to make these two 90 degree turns, and there's this needle that is in the way of that. Basically, it's creating a pressure differential between our upstream and our downstream. Okay, and by varying how much that needle is in or out of the path of flow, we can change the flow rate coming through there basically by, by controlling the size of this orifice, which is an opening. You know, controlling the size of that orifice will allow more or less substance through. Okay? So what I've drawn again is a here's a here's a fixed Oops, I'm going to do that better. Here's the schematic symbol for a fixed flow control valve. Here's a variable, meaning I can change the flow rate with this thumb wheel right here and move that needle in and out of the path of flow. Okay, like I said before, this is a non pressure compensated, and I need to kind of uh, break down this box again. That's a very important concept to understand. Flow, speed, pressure, strength. And one would assume there's a brick wall in between those two. And if you want to get a D, just go ahead and assume there's a, D, uh, a big brick wall between them. But um, if you want to discuss this a little bit further, you need to understand there is a little bit of play back and forth between these guys. And where that occurs is in our flow control valves. So how a flow control valve works, it requires a pressure differential between our upstream and downstream. And typically what you're going to get uh, from a manufacturer's specifications, you're going to get basically flow per PSI of differential. So flow per differential across the valve. So flow, again, is gallons per minute, typically. Differential, obvious, obviously, is PSI. So let's say we've got a pressure gauge right here, pressure gauge right there. And let's say we've set our relief valve to 500 PSI, and over here, 
we're seeing 250 psi, it's creating a pressure differential across there. So what is the pressure, pressure differential? Well, upstream, downstream. So up minus down. So if it was 500 in and 250 out, what's the differential? 250 psi. That goes there. And like I said, a manufacturer is going to give you the flow rate per pressure differential. And let's say this particular valve that we purchased from a manufacturer has a flow rate of one gallon per minute per 100 psi of pressure differential. Okay, so our pressure differential was 250, and I actually drew this arrow wrong. Manufacturer is going to give you this whole relationship right here. That should actually be going here. So the differential observed. Our differential observed is 250 PSI, and the manufacturer is giving us flow per differential. Dig what's going on here? PSI, PSI, ultimately you get a flow rate of, of gallons per minute. So observed, 250 PSI, flow rate given by the manufacturer, one gallon per minute per 100 PSI. Do the math, 2.5 gallons per minute okay so basically a flow control valve by creating a pressure differential is limiting our flow rate in this particular case to 2.5 gallons per minute okay so that is all well and good in a perfect world where our upstream pressure is stable and our downstream pressure is stable because you can already see what's going on here, right? If I increase my upstream pressure, what happens to my differential? Well, my differential will go, go up. And if my differential goes up, my flow goes up. Dig? What happens on the other end? Let's say my load suddenly goes down. It's an unloaded cylinder. Um, you know, suddenly goes to 10 PSI. What happens there? My differential goes really high, okay? And my flow rate goes really high. So basically flow rate can change because of the upstream pressure and because of the downstream pressure. You know, this is akin to me asking you in lab, hey, um, lift that thing over there, you know, lift that cylinder. It's a four-pound cylinder. You lift it pretty fast. And I'm like, okay, let's go out to the parking lot and lift this car. You're not going to be able to lift it as fast, okay? Um, you know, basically what I'm asking you to do there is basically I've created a pressure differential. You lift this four-pound object, and it's a tiny weight for you to lift. Um, lift this car, it's an incredibly large weight so it's going to take a lot longer for you to lift it okay so to summarize um that concept here i'm gonna i'm gonna move this secondary diagram down uh, i'll clean this up and summarize this so for a non-pressure compensated and i know we haven't gone over pressure compensated yet but for a non-pressure compensated flow control valve, um, your upstream pressure minus your downstream is obviously your differential. Okay? And if you've given a flow rate per PSI of differential, anytime you increase the differential, you increase the flow rate. So let's walk through a couple scenarios. Let's say um, we've got a load. It requires 250 PSI to move. 
and we set our so our load and unloaded. Let's say it requires 10 psi to move that particular cylinder, and um, you know just because of friction requirements. Let's say we set our relief valve at um, 750 psi, and come back again. Set it at 1,000 psi. So two separate occurrences, basically what I'm saying. Relief valve setting two, relief valve setting one. Okay, let's go ahead and take a relief valve setting one and the load. 750 minus 250. There is a 500 psi differential. And let's use our same um, flow control valve, non-pressure compensated flow control valve, where we get one gallon of minute per 100 psi. I would say our flow rate is five gallons per minute. So along comes an unloaded cylinder, 750 minus 10 psi, Quite obviously, our differential has gone incredibly high, 740 psi. Therefore, we should get 7.4 gallons per minute. Okay. So again, this I know that there's a I've, you might assume there's a brick wall between pressure equals strength, flow equals speed. There is not a brick wall. There's a little bit of porosity between there, especially inside the flow control valve. But when it comes out of the flow control valve, this is the number you get. Just worry about this. At the actuator, you see five gallons per minute when it's loaded. At the actuator, you see 7.4 gallons per minute when it's unloaded. So who moves faster? Pretty obviously when it's unloaded. Okay. Um, okay, let's go ahead and keep on working with this thing. And just tell me, just tell me, uh, don't even do the calculations. I change the relief valve setting to 1,000 psi, and it's loaded. Is it faster or slower than this? No calculations whatsoever. Pretty obviously, it's faster because there is a larger pressure differential. 1,000 minus 250, 750 psi of differential. Our flow rate, 7.5 gallons per minute if we were to use this valve right here. And again, that is specific to the valve. That will be given to you. Okay, again, um, what happens if it's 1,000 PSI and it's unloaded? Well, pretty darn fast, okay, because it's a huge pressure differential across that. So non-pressure compensated. And like I said before, that is a non pressure compensated flow control valve. And sometimes there is a check valve in parallel with this. And I know I keep on harping on this thing, but it's a pretty important concept to understand. Where is unrestricted flow? Well, basically as much flow as possible coming from this direction. It's going to go through the flow control valve and it's going to push the ball off the seat. So that is unrestricted flow. However, if flow comes from this direction, it's going to try to take these two paths. It's going to force the ball in the seat, and it's going to go that way. OK, so this is controlled or metered flow. This is obviously as much as your pump can provide. If your pump can provide 8 gallons per minute, it's going 8 gallons per minute out here. But let's say, again, we've restricted it down to 2.5 or whatever it is, 2.5. You're going to get 2.5 gallons per minute going this way. Just to make matters complete here, you know, your check valve, basically, if this is, if I want unrestricted in this direction, A cutaway diagram of the valve would look something like this. So again, unrestricted this way, whereas it's 
Uh, I kind of messed that up because I know that's upstream, downstream. You guys get the picture. Basically putting a, um, what do you call it, a check valve in parallel because you can run a flow control valve backwards. Some of them. Okay. So um, let me clarify that statement. You can run the flow control valve backwards, some of them, and you can run a flow control valve backwards if there's a check valve bypass backwards, okay? Um, Non-pressure compensated. We've already, I want to go back to this thing, non-pressure compensated. We have displayed a problem here. If our flow control valve is to control our flow, this doesn't look so controlled right here. You know, if all these crazy pressure differentials across here are changing our flow control, our flow, it doesn't look like it's really controlling it very well. So that's why there's something called a pressure compensated flow control valve. And that's what I've drawn right here. Well, partially. Pressure compensated flow control valve. And the whole purpose of the pressure compensated flow control valve is to give you the correct flow regardless of pressure. That's a pretty neat thing. And how it does it is this little arrangement right here. Yeah, and I could put a check valve bypass here too if I wanted to, where this is hooked into there. And schematics in, draw, in schematic world, what that looks like, there's a fixed flow control valve. There's a variable flow control valve. It's still variable because it's got this adjustable thumb wheel hooked to a needle. But a pressure compensated flow control valve has got this little arrow. What that means, and again, let's say it's got a check valve in it that is a bypass. So um, what this pressure compensated arrow means is that flow through this thing will stay the same within reason for any pressure upstream and downstream. And what it's got is this movable spool inside it. And the movable spool via this passage here that when upstream pressure increases to a certain point, you know, basically if upstream pressure increases and downstream stays the same, basically flow rate will increase in a non-pressure compensated. But in a pressure compensated, what's happening? It's pushing the spool closer, closer and it's closing off this passage here, thereby restricting flow. Pretty cool, huh? So even though upstream pressure changed via closing this passage right here, we maintain the same flow rate. Okay, what happens if uh, downstream pressure increases? Well, if downstream pressure increases, it's going to push it this way, opening up that passage right there. Okay? And that makes perfect sense because down, up, and that's our differential. Again, basically what we want to do is just keep that differential constant. So if our first case there, if our up increased, we closed our passageway. If our down increased, we opened up the passageway to increase the flow rate. Okay. Um, let's say. Okay, again, let's say the uh, it suddenly becomes unloaded. The cylinder like 
drops the load or whatever and you still want to keep a flow rate uh, constant, what's going to happen? The pressure on the downstream side is going to decrease. And again, you would expect the flow rate to suddenly increase. Well, it doesn't because the pressure here, the spool moves that way and again closes off that area, thereby closing off the orifice, thereby decreasing the flow rate. Okay? So that's a pressure compensated flow control valve. And again, the whole purpose of a pressure compensated flow control valve, keep the flow rate constant regardless of upstream pressure, regardless of downstream pressure. Pretty neat thing. Okay, um, what happens if you run a system at the beginning of the day, throughout the day, and at the end of the day? Does flow stay the same? In a perfect world, yes. We don't live in a perfect world. Um, what happens there is that hydraulic oil at the beginning of the day is extremely viscous, i.e. resisting fluid flow. And at the middle of the day, late afternoon, hot sun, it's been working all day, it's extremely slippery and the viscosity is decreased and the flow will change as a result of that. You know, just imagine you're trying to pump honey cold honey through a flow control valve early in the morning versus boiling hot honey. Uh, well, not boiling hot, but hot. It's a lot easier to get the warm honey to flow. So your flow would understandably increase. Your flow rate would increase. And that's a problem uh, because you want to say, let's say at the beginning of the shift, at the middle of the shift, at the end of the shift, you want to have a repeatable process that you can do over and over, let's say it's a very specific item that you need to grab at a certain speed using your hydraulic system. Um, you don't want temperature to come in play. So that's what's called is a temperature compensated flow control valve. And by extension, why would you put a temperature compensation on a non-pressure compensated flow control valve? So the whole purpose is to keep it stable. So pretty much all temperature compensated are also pressure compensated. So big mouthful, pressure compensated, temperature compensated flow control valve. And the symbol for that guy, it's a variable, yeah, let's put another word in there variable pressure compensated temperature compensated flow control valve you got your pressure arrow pressure compensated arrow you got your temperature compensated thermometer by the way let's put a check valve bypass in it too with check valve bypass look at that how many words one two three four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's a big word for a tiny object. And one would think that adding this functionality, the temperature compensation, is I've got to draw another incredibly complicated diagram like this and walk through this thing again. Well, it's not. All you do is change that stem right there. And basically what it is, it's a special type of bimetallic stem that expands and contracts. So again, um, super hot fluid, it flows slipperier. It's easier to make it flow faster. So when it's hot, you want this thing to expand. Dig? It's closing off the orifice. If something is becoming easier to flow and you want to control it, so you just let that expand when it's hot. Okay, let's say it's cold fluid. Well, cold fluid is hard to get to flow. So when it's cold, it contracts and opens up that orifice a little bit more. Okay, so adding temperature compensation to a pressure compensated variable flow control valve with check valve bypass is a pretty easy matter of just making sure that you've got the right stem for your needle valve. 
Okay, is this the only type of flow control valves there is? Uh, the answer is no. Um, what about just a simple on and off? That's basically an on-off valve. It could be a gate valve or a glove valve. Um, the ball valve, it's got its own special symbol with obviously appropriately enough a ball in it. So a ball valve, um, it really is a ball inside and it's got this passageway kind of drilled through it. And the deal is it's inside this ball enclosure and when that handle is allowing the passageway through you know basically flow can come through but if you spin this guy 90 degrees that passageway doesn't align no flow either direction. Let's use basically for system isolation. Can you use this as a flow control valve? Yes, you can, but it is an extremely poor idea to do so, okay, because because of the turbulence generated by partially closing this. Um, another thing about these schematics here, uh, I've been presenting um, pretty common uh, schematics out there, and I want you to be aware that these things are not always going to be written in the same schematics, especially if some of you guys go into the solar hot water um, field, because you're going to be dealing with a lot of plumbing systems. And, you know, for example, here's a symbol for a pump for hydraulic systems. What's this? Don't freak out. It's a pump. You know, that's the symbol that I've been using here, industrial hydraulics. This is what plumbers use. It's the same thing, kind of. Um, you can guess what it is, but what's this? Well, for industrial hydraulics, it's pretty obviously a relief valve. What's this? That's also a relief valve in plumber speak. How can I tell? Well, where is it? That's the biggest uh, that's the biggest uh, way of identifying that. And by the way, that that double triangle thing that's used very commonly in plumber world. Like for example, that's a check valve indicating the direction of free flow, whereas that's our check valve. The whole point of this kind of uh, excursion here is just be aware that there's different um, schematics out there. There's European schematics. Let's let's talk about that for a matter. These close, these ons and offs, I know that's the schematic. That's what it looks like on the diagram. That's what it looks like internally. What's it look like externally? Well, probably a pipe, the actual valve itself, and the outlet pipe, and it's probably got a lever on it. Is that closed or open? <laughs> it depends. In the US, that is closed. And this makes perfect sense to me, because if you think about this, that is a wall blocking flow from here to there. Just think of the lever as a wall. You, that is open. It does not make sense to me. Feel free at this time to go ahead and play the Star Spangled Banner, because that's U.S. closed, but U.S. unfortunately we are using the Neanderthal system, not the SI system. So that is one downside of that. Um, EU, that's open, and they're using the SI system. So good on them. Just be aware. 
be aware that there's sometimes, sometimes even companies will have their own schematics. Just go ahead and use them. Just go ahead and learn, okay? That's an accumulator versus this is an accumulator. By the way, that's an expansion tank in Plumber Speak, which is an accumulator and it makes sense. Um, I'm on the topic, let's just keep on going. Here's a flow meter, FI flow indicator. Pressure gauge, pressure indicator. You know these. You can figure that out if you're smart enough. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to test you on the plumber speak, but just be aware that they're the same things, different schematics. Um, that is pretty much it. I want to discuss about flow control valves, and I think what we're going to do next is we're going to move into flow control schemes, meter in, meter out, and bypass. Very essential topics to discuss controlling the speed of a hydraulic system.